everybody welcome back to Weosophy I got three more questions gonna jump right in how important is the by the way glasses make it a little easier to read those questions uh, how important is the Myers-Briggs personality test in gauging a person's capacity at work is there any truth to it um, I think that there is currently way too much of an emphasis on the Myers-Briggs personality test. Um, it is technically pseudoscientific. It does not gauge a person's aptitude properly. I'm not saying it's as woo-woo as using like horoscopes or blood types, which they do in Japan for some weird reason, or any of the other uh, uh, popular, you know, I, I, I guess a good term for it would be the, the woo-woo du jour, the, the crazy nonsense of the day whatever happens to be popular and you know you see these things come and go in trends I don't think that it's there's any harm in taking those tests especially for fun or even to see how you you mesh into society I don't think it's a, an issue in and of itself but when you take it very seriously like if you take it to such a point where a firm wants to hire people based on that or you, you I've, I've been seeing this more and more women want to date people uh, based on that once you get into that territory, it really is. It's kind of like, you know, well, at our law firm, we only want Aquarius. It's, 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 it's. Or, or, you know, I, I only date Scorpios. Or I only, my best friend should be a type O negative like me. That kind of thing. That's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, long answer, it's complicated and it's not inherently a bad means of, of gauging a person. But it is also not founded on the scientific method. It is not based on any objectively verifiable phenomena, so it should not be taken that seriously, and it certainly shouldn't be applied uh, as any means of discriminating between different people and their value. Um, yeah. Next question. Nine millimeter versus 45 <laughs> thoughts. Um, I think the whole caliber war is overrated. It's it's kind of like with the the previous question, you know, like the the Myers Briggs personality test, very overrated gauge of of a person's uh, aptitude. Just shoot what you like, whatever you feel comfortable with. Like like that's really what matters more. You know, you you see these mall ninjas, you know, oh, I only shoot something that take a man's head off at twenty yards. Like no. Uh, it, it's not that big a deal. In fact, I would I would even go so far as to say if you're comfortable, if you just spend all your time plinking, and you you feel comfortable shooting a 22, carry one. It it would make just as much of a difference when the heat is on, like an actual moment where you need it, as a 45 or a 9 or or, or any other caliber really. It's not that big a deal. What matters is what you're comfortable with and what you're familiar with and what you're good at. That's what matters most. Um, yeah, and I, I, again, people throw up ballistics tests. People throw up all these, these means of, of showing the efficacy of, of different calibers. It is not nearly as important as familiarity. And usually the people who are the loudest about that, about, you know, this, this is the only one to have. I don't know why anybody has anything else. Got to be 10 millimeter. Those are the people who don't put in any practice and... They're, they're, they're just collecting things based on uh, what their perceived value is for it. It's the same kind of people who don't know how to start a fire, but they have like a whole closet full of stuff for, for Tio Twaki. It's, it's, it's the same kind of attitude. It, you, you think that your credit card is going to help you uh, be ready for something when you're not using experience. So that's my opinion. Which one's better? Whichever one you're better with. Uh, let's see, last question, I'm going to pause it for a sec so I can draw it up because I can't remember where I put the last one. I need to put them all in one file. Okay, last question. Is cancer communicable? Fun question. Um, by and large, no. Cancer is caused by mutations taking place within a person's body. So a person has DNA, that DNA gets damaged by different things, uh, lifestyle in particular. But, you know, other things can happen to genetics, um, genetic mutations, in other words, in the tendencies for, for there to be flaws in DNA. Really all cancer is is when a normal, healthy human cell develops a mutation uh, b due to damage to the DNA that causes it to grow out of control. You know, normally cells grow at a very set rate called the Hayflick limit, which I think is like 23 times they can divide. 
and they also maintain a set size. Well, in the case of cancer, they just grow out of control, and they just, they just it, it's, it, they're just renegade cells at that point. Now, so it, it takes place within the body normally. Now, this is where things get kind of interesting. Um, let's say, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but let's say hypothetically, hypothetically, somebody needs a kidney transplant, and they get one from somebody who has the beginnings, or uh, you know, maybe cells that are predisposed to develop renal cancer. You could get it from that. In that case, I don't know if the word communicable would be accurate, but it is something that could theoretically happen. Additionally, there are communicable diseases that do raise the tendency of developing a cancer. There are retroviruses that actually cause cancer. That being said, I don't know of any in humans that are actively like spread. There are, there's a few retroviruses in chickens, for example, that cause those mutations. And um, the, one of the weirdest ones, in my opinion, you know, in Southeast Asia, for what, uh, whatever reason, it, it, I'm, I'm kind of confused about this. Um, I need to research that, actually. I'm very curious. Um, for whatever reason, esophageal and stomach cancers are really through the roof in Asian countries. And one of the reasons why is because H. pylori, the cause of ulcers in, well, around the world for the most part, the vast majority, and that's a new discovery, um, also lends itself towards stomach and esophageal cancers. Now, the reason why I say that's interesting and I need to study it more is why are Southeast Asians so much more disposed to getting H. pylori, which is conceivably communicable, and also why is it that people in the West, when they get H. pylori, they're more likely to just have run-of-the-mill ulcers and acid reflux, whereas it's more likely to form full-blown cancer in Southeast Asia. That being said, by and large, any of the kinds that you're probably concerned about, they're not communicable. They're not something you can catch. It's an inherent flaw on a genetic level within a person, usually caused by damage. So like somebody gets a lot of sun, those ultraviolet rays are uh, causing damage to the cell. Some of those cells might get a mutation. Some of those cells might grow out of control. And then the next thing you know, that person has uh, skin cancer. So that's how it normally works. It's not a communicable thing. It's more about lifestyle environment. And un unfortunately, I mean, I hate to say it, but luck of the draw. Um, like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.